Hey guys, welcome to Muse Themes. My name is Steve Harris, and this is our widget overview of the motor menu widget. So what this allows you to do is add some interactivity and some motion to the stock Muse menu widget. As you can see on our example here, we have just kind of a standard hamburger button, and when I click that, these menu items actually pull in. And again, this is the stock Muse widget that pulls in the plan view pages. So it's a really, usually quite a boring widget. And so these have come in off canvas and when I close it, they actually transition out in a completely different direction. So we say that this supercharges the Muse menu widget and that's why we called it the motor menu. So you can actually use this widget for lots of different things too. We have other examples. Uh, example three here, you can see that when I click on this button, we just get some kind of navigation icons here. So you don't need to use it for your primary nav only. You could use it for portfolio buttons or anything that you want to come in and not take up any kind of visual space on the site. You can also use custom open and close buttons for this. And another thing that's really great about it is it works beautifully on tablet and mobile. So you can do a great mobile menu with this widget. So with that said, let's jump into Muse and I'll show you how to set it up. Setup is really simple. Okay, now that I'm in Muse, uh, the first thing that I need to do, because this uses a stock menu widget, which is under the widget library and under menus, I need to make sure that I have some pages set up within my plan view. So on this website, I've got home. Let's add a new one. We'll just call this about. We'll add two more. We'll go portfolio. And then one last page for contact. Okay, perfect. So the reason that I did that is because if I go back to the home page here, and let's go to the widget library and let's drag out just a horizontal menu. Again, this is the stock Muse menu. So I'll drag that on the page. It pulls in the page names, obviously, from the plan view. So I wanted to have a couple pages set up here, so it made sense in the example. So let me take two seconds and kind of style this a little bit different. Let's just make them kind of a little bit more square. We'll change the color. Remember to pay attention to your states here. We want to make sure we're changing colors on the right state. So I'm changing the color in the normal state. And then on the rollover state, let's do something different. Let's go ahead and make it orange. Okay. And the last thing I'll do is let me just change the text on these. We'll do something a little bit different. Let's just go with Helvetica. And we'll bring the size up a little bit. Whoops, I'm on the wrong state, of course. Always happens. So let's go back to the normal state. Change that to Helvetica. Okay, so let's say that this is our site navigation. Of course, you'd probably spend a little bit more time styling this, but for this demo, this should work perfectly. So the first thing we'll do to set up the actual widget component here is I've downloaded the widget and it's in my library panel called Motor Menu. So let's drag it out. The widget comes with two components. We have the top component, which is kind of our main controller, and we have a a second component here called the positioning widget. And I'll get to this one near the end, but this gives you a little bit more control over where the menu is going to show up on the page. So another interesting thing about this menu is that we actually can, we can move this off the canvas initially. So we don't need the actual menu on the canvas anymore to work with this widget because it's coming in off canvas. So with that off canvas, let's just start looking at the menu options here. So on the top controller, I'll open up the flyout panel and you can see the first setting is nav menu graphic style and it says menu. So we need to apply a graphic style to that stock muse menu. So this guy. So let me click on it and let's add a graphic style and I'm going to call it menu. That's the same word that was already in the panel. Okay. So now that I've added that style, let's go back to this top panel and all of the options below are actually for things like transition settings and open and close buttons. So what that means is this widget should work right now as we've set it up. So let's just preview the page in the browser. You can see we have our hamburger icon. And if I click on it, our stock menu items are flying in from the top. Now, of course, the background color actually matches the first color I have on home here. So that's why you're not seeing a box behind there. But let me close it. And let's get through some of the option settings. We can change that overlay color. So the first thing we'll look at here is the open button setup. So right now you get a default hamburger icon. It's this one that you can see in the preview here. You can change the background color on it or the actual color of the button itself. So maybe I'll just make the button black. You can see it changes to black in the preview. We also have the option to use a custom open button. So if you click this, you just need to design a button, whatever it is, it can be any sort of graphic or element, and just give that button a graphic style name and enter it in, in here. 
Same thing goes for the close button. We did include a standard close button, but you can use something custom there if you wish. I'm okay with the default one for now. Okay, so in the options below the open and close button, we have the overlay and transition settings. So this is where we can control that background color that came in behind our menu. And we can control some of the directions and easing effects of the actual transitions in. So let's change the background overlay color. Right now it's set to this gray. Um, I'm just gonna make it black. And then we have an overlay opacity here. So let's just change the opacity and let's go up to something like 0.8 so it's gonna be quite dark I might need to actually restyle my menu a little bit but let's see how that looks next we have the transition type so we can set individual or all together now when they're individual each menu item is going to fly in or slide in on its own if we have them set to all together they're going to come in at one time so for now let's leave it at individual we have an entrance direction I'm gonna have them come down we have an exit direction let's go up okay now we have an transition duration so this is of course in seconds I'm just gonna go up to 0.8 so it's a little slower then we also have an easing effect there's tons of them in here but let's just go with something like that okay so with those settings set up let's have a look at how it looks in the browser so you can see they're coming in much slower they're coming in from the top and when I click the close button they're going back out from the top or to the top so everything looks like it's working really well now. So the other component to this widget is positioning. So of course the menu itself is off canvas. You can see it over here on the right side. So we can't really just place it somewhere on the Muse canvas and it's going to show up there. And that's what the second little component is for. It's called the positioning widget. Now if you want to have your menu just show up dead center all the time, you don't even need this positioning widget. You could delete it out. So if we look at the panel, and you can see at the very bottom here, we have menu positioning, and it says custom menu position, leave unchecked for center of page. So we could uncheck this and delete that second widget component out, and it would show up perfectly dead center. Or we can use that second widget to apply some positioning controls. So it says custom position graphic style, position. That's what this little widget component here has as a graphic style pre-applied position. So you don't even need to change any settings on this first option here. The important one here is the second one. It says alignment as placed. So the menu is going to place itself, if you have it set to standard, wherever you place this second widget component. If we change this to centered on Y axis, basically what it's going to do then is just center the widget in the page at the same kind of vertical location that this second component is. So I'll show you what I mean. Let's go back to alignment standard and let's take this component and let's put it up here in the top right. Now if I preview this widget, we open the menu. You can see that it's coming in kind of weirdly off the right side. And that's because our positioning widget is sitting right about here. So let me close this and go back to Muse. So obviously if we want to position our widget in the top right side, we're going to need it kind of somewhere around here because the top left corner of this widget is basically going to be where the top left corner of this component is. So if we wanted it kind of something like there, it probably is going to show up within the page now, but we might need to tweak it a little bit to get it perfect. That's much better, but still off a little bit. So if we just wanted this widget to be centered, but still kind of on the same axis as this item, then we could change this to centered. And watch what happens when we do that. We won't even bother moving the second component. Now when I click preview in browser and I click the menu, the widget comes in centered, but on the same level as that second controller. So this is just for you to control it on the kind of Y axis or the vertical of the page, and it will always show up centered within that area. You can use custom, completely custom positioning, as I said, if you just leave it on standard and just kind of move this around and tweak where it's going to show up. So that's how the motor menu widget works. Again, the reason this widget I think is such a great option is because as you add new pages in Muse, let's say we add another page here called gallery, the widget itself is going to add another item because it's that default menu widget. So often our custom widgets or menu widgets are just manually set up menus. And this allows you to take advantage of that automatic populating menu that Muse gives you right out of the box. So that's an overview of how to use our motor menu widget. If you have any questions or concerns, please don't hesitate to ask. Thanks again and best of luck.